Hey guys. How's everybody doing tonight? It is um, very cool where I am. Um, but um, I wanted to talk about something tonight. Um, I had a pretty good coaching session. So anytime I get some insight about love or love affairs, I try to bring to you what I learn <laughs> so that uh, I can help you. Um, so for those that don't know me, I'm Carla Nicole, I'm a wisdom coach, and um, I like to share sometimes some things that I think we seem to miss or we seem to um, forget. Hey, Arkenny. I think it's important that as we um, begin to uh, create bonds, create love affairs, uh, we get involved with, you know, our lovers. I think we, two things, I think we need to see as we grow and expand into the union we are in, we should often see if we are growing <laughs> together. Um, you know, prime example, when we have kids, right, and, and, and they're little, and we get their clothes for them, and then we get their shoes, and after so long, they outgrow them, right? They outgrow their shoes, they outgrow their clothes. We're having to go back out and get something else. Um, prime example, I'm going through that right now with my son, you know, he's, he's, uh, 12 and so adolescence is, is doing a lot. So we have moments where I'll be like, didn't I just get you some shoes and now you've outgrown them? Prime example. Well, um, the interesting thing about love relationships is that there comes moments when, as we grow and expand in ourself, we start to find ourselves um, sometimes outgrowing our lover or outgrowing our partner. And I think we get frustrated because <laughs> you ever had a favorite shirt? I know ladies can relate to having a pair of favorite jeans and they no longer fit, but we will squeeze as hard as we can into those jeans, no matter what. Um, and <laughs> I can talk about this because it's very true. There's jeans that we will not let go of because we love them, but damn, but we realize that we've outgrown them. Either we've outgrown them in style, the jeans no longer fit like they used to fit because we've either gained weight or lost weight. Um, or the style is out of style, right? <laughs> so I think it's important that we sit down and we pay attention to the relationships we're in. <laughs> I don't think we really look at if our partner or lover that we're in a relationship, if that partner is still fitting for who we are today. Um, and this is, this is very great example for people that have been in long-term relationships for years and years and years. And they still have the admiration, the love, the excitement about each other as if they still, um, if they, as if they are still in the honeymoon phase. And you're like, how do you guys still have this? You guys have been together forever. Well, it's because they've grown in themselves and they've grown with each other. So if you go back in photo albums, you see old pictures of love affairs. You see, you know, when they first dated and then when they had their kids and got married and when they, you know, got to their 25th anniversary and then their golden years. And, and you see each phase of that relationship progress from when they were young to when they get to their senior age. And you see that so many different styles of how she wore her hair and how he wears his clothes and what car they drove and what, what 
what home that we're in. And I think sometimes we forget that we can outgrow a partner because we're so caught up in the yesterday of them, who they used to be, what they used to do. And we never allow them to show us who they are today. Prime example, parents are very good for this. Like we can have a child that's, I don't know, 21. Prime example, I can use myself as an example. I have my 21 year old daughter. But if I never allowed her to grow up in real time, basically be who she is today and still see her as my two year old or my three year old or my five year old, I wouldn't treat her as an adult. I would continue to treat her like a toddler and still try to be overbearing and try to take over and demand her to do things that I expect from her and all these things. I wouldn't have advanced my care or my parenting style to match who she is today. This applies in relationships, people. I'm finding a lot of relationships we are still trying to squeeze into and we know damn well it no longer fits <laughs> it's over now it doesn't match us anymore our flair our our who we are today is no longer matching it does not mean that you do not love that person it just means that you've shifted and changed right through the years and it doesn't mean you don't care about them it doesn't mean you don't love them. It doesn't mean you don't have a fond history with them. Hey, what's up, um, Efren? So it's, it's, it's very important that we step back and we start to understand, well, wait a minute. I was in love with you in high school. We went through some challenges and, and we went through here and there and everywhere. But now where I'm at in my life mindset, thinking, how I flow, what I want, doesn't quite match the same woman I was when I was first dating you. Prime example, we still we still want to squeeze in those cute ass jeans we had when we were in high school, but we know damn well they no longer fit. So are we going to keep them in our closet or are we going to get rid of them, pass them on to someone that can wear them? And we have a hard time doing that in relationships. We will hold on with a death grip to a man or a woman that we love because of who they were to us at the time we matched. It fits. It went well together. And it doesn't always have to mean we have to fall out and be angry or saddened or sometimes we just outgrow our lovers. Sometimes we just outgrow our relationships. And it is all right. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be upset. You don't have to be sad. You don't even have to act an ass about it. It just is. Change is going to come, right? Change is going to come even when you're talking about, you know, seasons. The seasons are getting ready to change, right? The time just recently changed. So there's going to be a lot of things that's going to change through our life. Well, that also includes the change with our relationship. Sometimes we outgrow our lovers sometimes we have to sit down and say um what is it we want to do now i could have loved you 10 years ago because we matched we fit right we had similar taste in things but one thing about us as human beings if we're constantly expanding we're constantly changing we're constantly learning something about each other or even ourselves we start to evolve and we start to grow and we start to get more awareness. We start to get, I don't know, more, um, more mature, for instance. There's certain things I'm not going to do at 47 that I did at 27. <laughs> I'm not going to still do some of those things that I used to do. I'm not going to still do all the things I used to, uh, whatever okay so again we're not going to do those things anymore at 47 i would i would look ridiculous trying to do some of the things i did at 27 it wouldn't look right right you ever gone to a bar <laughs> and you see people that are still out there at the club and 
it is way past the time that they should be there. They're like in their 50s and 60s and they're still out there trying to fit in with the young crowd, with doing what the young people do. And they look hilarious. It's like, why are you out here? You know it doesn't match. But we do it anyway, right? Because we don't want to admit to ourselves that in due time, we're going to change. We're go it's just inevitable. Not all relationships are going to grow into senior years and into golden years together. It's just not always going to be the case. There are going to be times when you fit and you match and you mesh and you do grow into senior years. It just depends. But again, because of my coaching session this e evening, I was explaining to her, like, you're trying to still squeeze into a relationship that doesn't fit you anymore. Why don't you just back away from it and understand that sometimes we got to let go of people that we know that no longer fits our life. And it doesn't have to be a nasty um, parting of ways. Sometimes we just have to watch, walk away and just be like, okay, it's just not working anymore. Um, especially if you build a family with each other. Sometimes you just got to part ways and it's okay. It's no big deal. But I wanted to share with you guys the importance of saying, if, if I'm growing and changing and evolving and advancing myself into somewhere um, to a different dimension than I even knew about me Then we also have to be respectful of understanding that our mate may do the, may do the same thing And we may part because of course the differences of taste of things May definitely change and shift me into something that I didn't know about myself And then there's some things that you didn't know about yourself and as you grow and you learn you're like man I didn't realize how much I'm learning about me. Sometimes when you're in your private time, you're learning, you're reading, you're doing different things, you're advancing your mind, you're traveling, you're getting more aware of some things you didn't know. It's beautiful, but it also expands your mindset. So as it's expanding your mindset, you're, if your lover or your partner is limited and can only have a smaller scope of sight, they're not going to be able to understand you. And understanding is key when, you're, when it comes to intimacy. There has to be a level of understanding. If you don't understand your mate or your lover, it's going to constantly be turbulence. It's going to constantly be tug of war because there's no, com there's no common mindset. There's no common ground. There's no common understanding. And so people begin to feel... Like you're not really understanding me. And so what happens when I don't understand you? I begin to get angry, right? Say for instance, I was on here right now and I was talking to you in Spanish. You would know what I'm saying. And you could be very upset because you're like, well, I, I feel the energy coming from you. I appreciate that, but I don't know what you're saying. So now I'm getting upset. I'm getting angry, right? Same goes in relationships. If I'm standing here and I'm conversating with my lover about how I feel and he can't relate to what I'm saying, then it's like he's not going to catch on. And then there's going to be what? Aggravation? It's going to be confusion a lot of times. And then it's going to be debated. It's going to be debated that I'm just frustrated with you. And now... I'm not feeling as warm and fuzzy inside when I'm in your presence. Now you're more of a nuisance. Now you're more of an aggravation to be around because we can't see eye to eye because there's no understanding. There's no comprehension of each other's mindset. Intimacy is very powerful. But with intimacy comes understanding and it also, it also requires growth in the mind and in the heart and in the soul. What I said earlier about trying to squeeze in jeans I can no longer fit is the same thing we do when we're in a relationship that no longer fits. We're still trying to squeeze into that relationship and we know damn well we've outgrown it. <laughs> Even when we tried to allow it breathing room, it's still too tight. Just like walking around in shoes too tight. It's very uncomfortable. You're like, damn, these hurt. After a while, I got to take them off, right? So we do the same thing in relationships. We hold on to it with a death grip. And then we're like, I don't understand why we can't get along. It is because it no longer fits you. And that is okay. 
it is okay to tell yourself it's not working. But we will be in denial with ourselves and try to figure out how can I make this work? What can I do to make things get better? Sometimes we outgrow each other. It doesn't take something like going to a counselor, going to coaching or going here and going there to try to figure that out. Sometimes we just outgrow each other. And then here's the other thing. A lot of times we're we're together with somebody and it's just like, oh, I've been with you so long, I'm taking you for granted. So that means I'm in your space too much. You ever feel like, man, I know exactly what you're going to say. You're very predictable. I know all your patterns. I know everything you're going to do. And so now I'm losing my what? My mystery of you. I don't know. I know too much. So now it's it's like, uh, it's it's pretty much predictable. Predictability is okay, but in order to keep spice and 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 uh, lust for each other, you gotta have a ele- a huge element of surprise. Surprise me. Give me something to get to know you about. If I'm in your space all the time, I begin to lose, you know, um, desires to 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 be thrilled. Why do you think so many people when they first get together? are so excited about being in each other's presence because they don't know anything. They're still learning. And once we get to the point where we're no longer learning each other, we're no longer taking the time to get to know that lover, we start to just get complacent. It starts to become humdrum, boring, right? And another thing, when you're in a relationship, a lot of times we get frustrated because... We don't like just the humdrum or the routine or the functional relationships. A lot of times we enjoy all the drama. We get high off of drama. Look at how many people will turn on and be all in and and excited about scandals. What's going on? Who's sleeping with who? What's going on here? What's going on there? The paparazzi doesn't chase around people with functional relationships. They don't chase around. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? When did you see the paparazzi run around? When does TMZ running around trying to find out how much somebody loves somebody else? Functional relationships. Do you see TMZ running behind functionality? No. And you won't. Because scandals sales, sex sales, you know, uh, all kinds of drama sales. Look at soap operas are still running. Soap operas was running when I was little. And I'm sure way before that. So, so the reality is we're more drawn to the dysfunctional stuff. We love dysfunction. We love to learn all about the drama and who said what and what's who you got the tea and all. It, we love all that stuff. We love all the drama and stuff. Um, but when you're in, in a in a sacred, functional, normal relationship. A lot of times the reason why we fall apart is because we know each other way too much. We are in each other's space way too too long. We have to have time of self just to get to know ourselves. We need time alone. We need time and space to be apart from our lover, no matter how much we love him. Because really we lose our individuality, so therefore we're losing the intrigue within our love relationship. You're in a partnership with somebody and you don't you know everything about them, you're gonna start to lose the desire to get to know them. You don't need to be in their space because you already know what they're gonna say. You already know everything. You're no longer interested in that. It's like going back and keep watching a rerun over and over and over again. It's like I've watched this this show over and over. I don't want to watch it no more because I've seen it enough. You don't think that happens in relationships? We have to step back and say, hold on. I need to take time to just be with myself. I need to I need to take time to do for myself. I need to do what I want to do. Because a lot of times we in relationships we're suffocating each other and once you suffocate your mate, you start to lose that interest in them and you start to lose the intimacy because I no longer am I into you enough to see anything about you. I already know all that. I already know. And it's like, when you see that, 
you start to understand, ooh, so you're not really in it or, or, or excited about it anymore. The reason why honeymoons work so well and the reason why love affairs are hot and, and you, you have this high desire to be with each other is because you just are intrigued by their being you're you're curious about what they're thinking and what's new on the agenda and what's going on and oh my god how have you been and what what did you learn today and tell me what you read about and it's much more exciting than i know he's gonna come home he's gonna do this he's gonna do that then we're gonna go here we're gonna go there it's it's a humdrum and so if you're talking about long-term loving relationships, a lot of times we can't sit down and truly enjoy each other because we're not enjoying the fact that we've seen you all the time. We're so used to you saying the same stuff over and over again. There's no flair. There's no ex excitement anymore. And we're getting bored with each other. That's when you got to pull out. You got to have moments alone, man. You got to have time apart. You got to do you. Whether you're in love or not, a lot of times we're suffocating our mate and in that suffocation, we're losing our, our, our intimacy. We're losing how we feel about each other and we don't even know why. We're like, I don't know. I just don't feel the same. That I hear all the time. When I, when I get people calling me, inboxing me, wanting a session, it's like, what's going on? Well, I just don't feel the same and I don't even know why. Well, are you... Are you even intrigued by each other anymore? Are you taking the time to learn about each other? Or are you spending more time concerned about only being involved with this and that? Or you're more concerned about what's going on on empire and power than you are in your own love relationship. These kind of things is, is true has true value. You got to be mindful. See, a lot of times we don't want to talk about real stuff. But I'm big about helping people that really are in unfit relationships. Unfit meaning that you're, you've outgrown your partner. You've outgrown each other because you spent too much time um, trying to squeeze your ass into a relationship that is way too small. So I'm just helping you to see. It is okay to be in a relationship to where you're feeling excited about each other. You want to be with each other. But if you are no longer excited about being in their presence, seeing what they're up to, seeing what they're talking about, what are they giving you? Are you still learning from your mate? I mean, real talk, are you learning something from them? Each other. Like, a lot of times we'll think, well, my mate should be teaching me. Well, what are you teaching your mate? Sometimes we as women have a tendency to believe that the man is supposed to teach you everything. It's not true. We have to do our own research and learn some things that we can bring to the table as well to help the balance and the and the uh, fruitfulness of the relationship. What are you bringing? As my dad said to me when I was 10, what are you going to bring to the table? And that's important. We need to sit down and look at that. Well, what am I bringing? <laughs> am I just burdening him with what I want? Or am I also coming to the table with something as well? And these are things that are important. When you want a long-term relationship, you've got to sit down and look at some things and say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. But at the end of the day, this is what I'm coming with. I'm coming to you with this because I have something to offer this relationship as well. And when you come from that space, your relationship begins to expand and grow. And it and not only does it grow, it also, bold, it also um, encourages people both partners to grow together rather than apart you're growing apart because there's no longer any type of curiosity about each other um a lot of people are with people that they're no longer even liking they don't even really like their partner and i've talked about this before where you just don't have a fond admiration for them and you're really frustrated by their mere presence but you're together just to say that you have the, I have the title. I'm in a relationship. Okay. But you're miserable. So what is that doing for you? Right? I hope I helped somebody today. Make sure you share this video. Also go over to my YouTube channel. Okay. It's called Carla Nicole wisdom channel. Subscribe to the channel. Um, because I've done a lot of work on that channel. I've done quite a few videos about intimacy, about sexual relations, about, um love about parenting there's a lot of videos over there called carla nicole wisdom 
channel and just make sure you subscribe to it because I'm going to be doing a lot more things with it also. But I do want you guys to go over there and subscribe to that. Um, and also share this video because I think we tend to act as though, um, we're, we're in a, we're in a good relationship when we know that the relationship is much too small now and we're still trying to squeeze into it when we know it no longer fits. I'm just saying. <laughs> I hope I helped you guys tonight. I'm going to get in the bed. I, I get up very early. I get up at like four o'clock. So, um. If you guys need a coach, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Inbox me. I have a page called Carla Nicole Wisdom Coaching Services. It's on Facebook. You can go over there and, and ask for a, a session. Um, and also, like I said, go to my YouTube channel, Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. Go over there and subscribe to it. But again, like I said, just remember, you don't want to stay squeezed into a relationship you no longer fit. It is okay to be alone. Trust me. It is okay to do for you and get your stuff together for you. Trust me. Because once you once you do that, you'll be like, wow, I didn't even know I could actually do something for myself and enjoy it. It's very important. All right, guys, I'm out of here. It's Carla, it's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. That's Kep. Have a great day, guys. Good night.